Well, I don't care. You're telling me I know you and I don't care. So all the people who don't know you don't care. The woman you want doesn't care. You can't go up to a chick at a bar and say, you know what? Usually I'm really charming. Today I'm a bit sad. Can you, <laughs> can you give me a pass? Can you let me off? She'll be like, go away, weirdo. The, people, the chick you want doesn't care. The job you're supposed to perform at doesn't care. If the man who wants to mug you decides to pull a machete, he doesn't care. You can't say, bro, I'm not in the mood for a fight today. Tomorrow, please. Nobody cares. So why do you care? All the people out here in the world don't care, but you're going to sit there and you're going to care. You're the only person in the world who cares. You're going to walk around telling everybody, trying to find somebody who gives a Good luck. Because what's going to happen is you're going to walk around feeling sorry for yourself, trying to find somebody who cares. You might find somebody who pretends to care long enough for you to get a little bit of dopamine. But all in all, you're wasting time in a hyper-competitive world where people like me who perform regardless of how they feel are just going to perpetually bury you. And then you're going to sit there and wake up and go, why am I a loser? Well, because when Andrew was sad, he continued to perform. When Andrew was in jail, his business didn't fall apart. He was doing push-ups every day. His body didn't fall apart. Nothing about his life degraded when he was in a jail cell surrounded by cockroaches. You're in a plushy bed at home, crying about what? And you expect to, the male world's hyper-competitive. So you're not allowed almost as a man to put that much importance on how you feel. You don't have time to care about it because you have too much to do. This is what I, I find so remarkable. If I feel sad, I don't think, how do I stop myself? I need to not feel sad. I just go to work. I got stuff to do. I'm a man. I have things to do every single day. This whole therapy garbage. I can't think of a way faster to ruin your mindset and destroy your ability to resist the perils of life than go into therapy. And the overdiagnoses of everything. It's like you have this, you have that. And then people take that as an excuse to not ever have to get better. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, now I can be permanent because I realize I've got this. I went to the doctor and the doctor says that I have this. And so that's the reason why I don't respond. I've got, I've got ADHD. I think now it's like one in every, two people has ADHD, ADHD. And that's why I'm not able to focus and do my homework or complete a task or keep going to the gym every single day. Self and I hate it. It's, yeah, it's, it's the self fulfilling prophecy. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. And I really can't think of a quicker way to destroy your mind than go to therapy. Part of me, if I had time to waste, Candace, which I don't because I've been on house arrest long enough. And once I'm out of here, I'm going to enjoy myself. But if I had time to waste, I would love to go to start therapy. I would love to like, imagine me, Andrew Tate. I'm going to go to a therapist and she's not going to know who I am. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to do therapy and I'm going to do a video. I might actually do this. It's actually a great idea. I might do a video after each therapy about what bullshit it was. <laughs> And just sitting there talking about, okay, when you were eight, yeah, what happened when you were eight? Because when, in your childhood, not everything's because of my childhood. Not, not everything works that way. Like, it's so asinine. I've actually had conversations with therapists, I think twice in my life. I did a TV show in England and I had to speak to a therapist. And then um, I think it was another TV show, two TV shows, I had to speak to these therapists. And I sat there and said, I don't believe in what, you, I don't believe in your science because in math, one plus one is two. And we understand that. Whereas with what you teach, you can have a guy who doesn't drink alcohol because his dad was an alcoholic and a guy who is an alcoholic because his dad was an alcoholic. So how can you have the same scenario and two completely different outcomes? She goes, oh yeah, but there's general rules we can follow. I said, then let's end the conversation. I'm not a general person. I'm not a general person. I'm exceptional. So can we just stop wasting everybody's time here? <laughs> because all your general rules don't apply to me. I'm smarter than you. What have you achieved? Goodbye. I'm a world champion. See ya. Like it's, it's garbage. And I, I really do believe, I think there is this mass drive to instill the idea of absolute selfishness in people. I think they're trying to, when I really analyze the ideal citizen they want, the ideal citizen is yes, docile, and yes, he's eunuch, but he's also ultimately selfish because then you don't care about community. And I think therapy is a fantastic way to make you selfish. Because that's all you talk about is what do you talk about? Garbage. Yeah, why you have the right to act this way, even if you're why acting terrible. Why I feel, yeah. why did I do well? You know, when I was nine, oh, I get a life. Yeah, that's really Prince Harry's book, honestly. Is it? Yeah, it's, yeah I, I can only get past the first two chapters. I was like, this is, it should have just been called privileged. You know what I mean? And this is the thing. <laughs> These aren't even struggles. And here's the thing. I, I think Margaret Thatcher said the best upbringing you can have is good parents and no money. Because you look at Prince Harry with the, you can't, talk about anything better for a perfect upbringing. Royal family. Come on. It's not his fault, right? Royal family. Fine. But he was supposed to have gone to the army. He went to Afghanistan and supposedly he fought, but obviously he didn't. He's the he prince. Played Xbox of course. He, yeah, he just yeah. sat in the back. But if you don't give a man struggle, look what he becomes. Mm -hmm. Tell me the kind of man, if I were to say to you, imagine a man who's never struggled in his life, physically, mentally, everything's gone perfect for him. He's born in the royal family. Everything's been perfect for him his whole life. Is that the kind of man anybody respects? Is that the kind of man anyone wants to be? And struggle is subjective. 
right? So Prince Harry dealing with his dealing with his current problems of his wife nagging. To him, that's full mental breakdown, right? My problems are obviously much larger, but struggle is subjective. To him, to us, they're almost on the same level. But if you were to compare them side by side, they're absolutely nothing. So as a man, you have to build resilience and you build resilience through going through something and building a tolerance to it. And this guy's had such a privileged life that he's ended up a miserable, depressed, unhappy person. So this is what's actually very interesting when men come to me or young boys come to me and talk about something bad that happened to him. I said, good. Absolutely, you're not really good. You should be glad that thing happened to you because that's the reason you're going to be the man who can resist the perils of life in the future. If bad things don't happen to you, you're going to end up like Prince Harry. You do want to end up like that dude, do you? No one you're, does. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you're gonna, your life's going to be so easy, you're going to get to the end result and your wife's just going to wreck you. So you need to have all these bad things happen to you so you build the mental resilience. And that's another thing about masculinity and, and males as a whole. We're trying to take that all away from them in almost every regard. And it's kind of like, there used to be like rites of passage where a boy would become a man. That's all gone. There used to be this masculine, very healthy peer pressure to be big and strong. And that's all gone. There used to be, I mean, I don't want to use the wrong words. I don't want to get attacked for it. But men used to conscious, not pick on each other, not bully each other. But hey, you can't do push-ups. You're weak. We push each other in that way. Shame each other to excellence almost. We still do it to this day in this house. Tristan's bigger than me. He's 10 kilo bigger than me. Six foot four. I'm six foot three. I'm smaller. He'll bench 160, 170 kilo. I can only bench like 150 kilo. He'll call me a bitch for three hours. Like, that's just how we are. So I have to get up and try again. That's how men are. We've taken well, women are too. And, and that's what I'm really against. Sorry to cut you off, but I'm super against this, this parenting structure where you don't want anybody's feelings to get hurt. I'm one of three sisters. We're a year and a half apart. We tried to kill each other. You know what I mean? All I would do is call my sister. No one has called her uglier more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you're ugly. You're this. You're fat. Da, 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 da. That's actually good. Yeah. You know, it, it makes you tougher. And when you see these only ch children who've yeah. never gone through anything, their parents told them they were perfect and wonderful. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I wouldn't trade my childhood trying me and my sister's trying to kill each other you know every single day it's it difficult over a t-shirt yeah you know? and, and it doesn't matter how much money you have life is always going to be difficult it doesn't matter how much you try and shelter your children how rich you are what family they're born into life is going to be difficult and if there is no struggle in their life they're going to find struggle or something that shouldn't be a struggle will become a struggle for them because their life has been so sheltered and life is hard mm -hmm. so if you can't avoid the difficulty you may as well get very good at it you may as well get good at difficulty and it's amazing when you look at someone like Prince Harry, he's just a man who has not become very good at difficulty and he's just completely collapsed in the face of a woman who's complaining at him. And yeah, the, even worse than all that, the dishonor of, of selling out. We were talking about how I feel a duty to my bloodline and my last name and I have to do my father proud. He's from the British royal family. Like, and he had no honor. He couldn't even sit and say, to, look, listen. He couldn't I, even shut up for them. Yeah, literally. He had to sell out in a book. Like, God does not smile favorably on people who make these kind of decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why he's going to be unhappy for a very long time. And he's going to realize that it was never worth it. And what did he do it for? Money? money. From the royal family, my friend. You really need money that bad? Like, it's, it's truly shameful. And I think deceit and treachery are the most heinous and most disliked personal qualities or something you can actually witness somebody do. I think everybody hates them. And it's because anybody can fall victim to them. Anybody can fall victim to deceit yeah. or treachery because you trust that person. Everybody trusts someone, right? So if that person turns on you, you're always in trouble. So I think he, he thinks that he has the populace on his side, but I don't think he understands that when you out yourself as a snake, everybody intrinsically dislikes you. Mm -hmm. Even if they enjoyed watching the show. Oh, completely. They've stepped away and went, okay. Because I, I gave the example on my show. You know, you have the Kardashian family, and but the one thing about them is they, they're they thicker than thieves. So America does like a reality show, right? They like a reality show, but the reason why they have gained popularity is because actually they always back each other up. Yeah, yeah. They, they still remain a family unit. 100%. And when you betray that, when you betray family, I think left and right, you just kind of go, okay, maybe that was a little too much. Yeah. It was fun to watch. It was fun to watch, but, but mm, we don't really trust you. I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be your yeah, friend. Yeah, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> yeah, completely. I mean, you're going to sell your own brother out? What am I to you, right? If you do that to your own brother, what am I to you? Absolutely crazy. And then he wonders why. And I also think what he probably doesn't understand, and if he's watching this, you never know, he might. Hello, Harry. <laughs> if he's watching this, I don't think he even understands that even his woman views him that way. Mm -hmm. Even Megan views you that way. Even Megan looks at you and goes, I complained at you over William, and you were supposed to tell me to be quiet, and you didn't. So now I think you're a bitch. <laughs> 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 now what? And you wonder why she's never happy. So now he's in big trouble. I don't know what he's going to do with his life, but he's in big trouble. But it's kind of, it's interesting where I don't see how 
It's actually an interesting conversation to have about how psyops can work as a whole, because when I analyze, especially as a man, and I always talk from the masculine frame, not because I'm a misogynist, but because I'm a man, and I understand the masculine frame because I am a man. If you stray from the, the archetype of masculinity, if you stray from honor, courage, if you're not dutiful, if you don't believe in putting honor in your last name, if you don't want to be physically and mentally strong, if you don't believe in finding problems to solve, you don't believe in having a difficult life, if you stray from this because you've been psyop to stray from it, all you end up with is misery. And it's amazing that people will see anybody who's strayed from it end up perma-miserable and still fall for the psyop. I, I find it incredible that people don't think logically long enough to sit and say, okay, whose life do I actually want? I would never adopt the thinking of somebody whose life I didn't want. I, I don't know why people even do that. I could sit and have a conversation with Prince Harry for 10 hours straight. And he could be as compendious and convincing and concise, and, and he could be extremely perfectly articulate with his points. And at the end of it, I'd say, yeah, but I don't want to be you. So I don't want to think like you. So get fucked. Yeah. So, but uh, I wouldn't want to listen to him. So I, I don't know why people don't even just wake up and go, okay, whose life do I want to live? What kind of person do I want to be? Who do I want to be like? That's the kind of thinking I need to adopt and install in my mind because we're all being programmed by someone to a degree. And I don't think you can escape programming. You can just choose the programming that you are going to install inside of your mind. I'm not going to sit and say I'm not programmed. My father programmed me. My fight coach programmed me. The friends I have around me programmed me. My brother programs me. My social circle programs me. We're all programmed to a degree. You have to be very careful who, who you're going to allow give you the programming. Because if you put it up to society and culture, the current culture, as a man, you're going to end up like Prince Harry.